Peace be unto you, beloved of God. My cup of joy runneth over this morning because I am so glad that the Lord saved me. I can truly testify this morning, if it had not been for Jesus, oh, I don't know where I would be. I believe I wouldn't be standing here today, but I thank and praise God who is able to keep us. I thank and praise God. I'm so glad that the Lord saved me. My name is Minister Golden, and I welcome you to the Lone Branch Baptist Church Bold Experience, located at 28 Boat Street, Greenville, South Carolina, 29605, where Reverend Sean Dogan is our pastor, and our motto is, we are about saving souls and solving problems through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And also, beloved of God, I'm so excited because our theme for 2022 is I'm impact, your impact, and we are better together. Better together with Jesus, better together with you, better together with one another. For together we stand, but divided we fall. Let us pray. Almighty and all wise God, we come in the name of Jesus to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for this day. For this is the day that you have made, and we can rejoice in it and be glad. We ask in your name, almighty God, that you will feed us bread from heaven. Let us hear from you, Father God. Crucify us so that you will be glorified, so that we can be strengthened in what you speak into our hearts today. Dwell in the midst of us. Watch over us and keep us. Lead us and guide us. We yield ourselves unto you, almighty God. Now have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Our lesson topic this morning is serving a just God. Our scripture lesson this morning will be coming from Job, the 42nd chapter, the first through the sixth verse, and 10 through 17 verses. Our devotional reading this morning will be coming from Job, the 37th chapter, the 14th through the 24th verse. And our memory verse for the week is Job 42 and 3. Let us read the word of God together. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. You ask, who is this that questioned my wisdom with such ignorance? It is I. And I was talking about things I knew nothing about. Things far too wonderful for me. You said, listen, and I will speak. I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. I had only heard about you before, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. I take back everything I said, and I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. When Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as he had before. Then all his brothers, his sisters, and former friends came and feasted with him in his home, and they consoled him, and they consoled and comforted him because of all the trials the Lord had brought against him. And each of them brought him a gift of money and a gold ring. So the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life, 
even more than in the beginning. For now, he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 teams of oxen, 1,000 female donkeys. He also gave Job seven more sons and three more daughters. He named his first daughter Jemima, the second Kizaya, and the third Karen Kapachi. In all the land, no women were as lovely as the daughters of Job. And after their father put them into his will, along with their brothers, Job lived 140 years after that, living to see four generations of his children and grandchildren. Then he died, an old man who had lived a long, full life. Beloved, if you have never read the book of Job, you need to. It will bless you. When you carefully read it, it will reveal to you that it deals with and addresses some of the same problems and situations that we are faced with today. Maybe not to that extreme, but listen, pain is pain. Sickness is sickness. Life, I mean death is death. Loss is loss. Suffering is suffering. No matter what shape or form it may come in, however it may come, it causes sorrow, it causes pain, it causes hurt. But one thing we must remember, beloved of God, as believers, we have to understand life has its good days and life have its tryings and tough days. But through it all, through it all, God always, he always see us through. God always will give us the strength. He will always give us the power to make it through. Job, beloved of God, is not some made up character for good reading. Job is real. He had some real, real, real challenges. Job was a godly man. He was a wealthy man. He was a businessman. He loved God. He loved his family. He loved his friends. He loved his neighbors. He was kind. He was generous. Job was honest. Ezekiel 14, chapter and the 13th through the 20th verse speaks of Job as a righteous man. Israel had sinned. They had rebelled against God. And God said he was going to destroy all the people in the land. But God also said that if Noah, if Daniel, and if Job had been living in the land, at that time, they would be the only three people that he would not destroy because of their righteousness. Even because of our righteousness, beloved of God, trouble has a way of knocking at our doors. Trials of life have a way of, attack, of attacking us. And that's what happened to Job. The trials of life began to attack Job on every leaning side. His family forsook him. His friends forsook him. Even his neighbors forsook him. Look, Job didn't understand what, what he was going through. He didn't understand why what was happening to him was happening. He didn't know what he had done for this to happen to him. Everybody had forsook him, and it seemed like even God had forsook him. Of course, you and I know today we know what was going on, but at that time, Job didn't know. How do you feel? What do you think, beloved of God, 
when trouble start attacking you from all directions. And it seemed like God have gone silent on you. Seemed like you can't get a prayer through. I sense in my spirit, beloved of God, that somebody under the sound of my voice right now is going through some trying times. You're having difficulties in your home, difficulties on your job. You're challenged with sickness in your body. You're challenged with financial struggles, difficulties in life as a whole. You say, you know, I'm a fight for prayer warrior. I pray without ceasing. I intercede on behalf of others. I sow bountifully. I serve joyfully. I walk in the spirit of love. I walk in the spirit of forgiveness. But yet, it seems like I'm challenged with one storm after another, one trial after another. And I cried out to the Lord, oh my God, how much longer? Lord, my God, how much more? And God, in his still, small voice, speaks to your heart. And he says, read Job 14 and 1. And read Psalms 34 and 19. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord, but the Lord, but God will deliver them out of them all. God will not hang you out to dry by yourself. God will not leave you, nor will God forsake you. God, people, beloved of God, will not escape trouble, but God will never abandon us. God will always protect us and empower us, and the Lord will give us the strength that we need to make it through every trial, every storm, and all of our tribulations. Beloved of God, I may not understand all the things that the Lord do. I may not see God like I want to. I may not understand everything that God allowed me to go to. I may not understand why God don't answer me as quickly as I would want him to. But this one thing I do know, this one thing I am sure of, that my God is real. I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that my Savior, my Father, my God is real. And because I know that God is real, because I know that God lives, I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to wait until my change come. I'm not going back. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to look back. I'm not going to turn around. I'm not going to throw in the towel. But I'm going to wait on the Lord. For Isaiah 40 and 31 tells us, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. Thank you, almighty God. With everything that Job was going through, one could easily ask this question. Was God just in allowing Job to go through what he was going through? And Job trials came back to back. They didn't come one this year and one next year, but they came back to back. I can remember an old folklore preacher. This is the way he said it. Why or was it just that God sent Satan on Job? His family was attacked. His business was attacked. His finances was attacked. His integrity was attacked. His health was attacked. Beloved of God, no matter the attacks, the question, is God a just God? We don't have to even 
entertain that question. The question is not, is God a just God? And why did he sit Satan on Job? The question is, why did God sit Satan on his only begotten son? Listen, God will never allow us to go through something. He will never allow us to endure something he haven't already gone through himself. Job's affliction was light compared to what Jesus had to suffer. But the glory of it all, the glory of it all is they both came out with the victory. Beloved of God, God never tests us to see how bad we are, but God always tests us for our good. And during our testing time, during our testing time, we should look at and we, could sh we should see our spiritual growth. We should reaffirm our faith in the God that we serve, the God that we have pledged our allegiance to, the God that we declare, I'm going to serve him until I die. So my question is for you, beloved of God, are we going to stand with God or are we going to fall with the devil? In our lesson, Job 42 the last chapter gives us a glimpse of just how just God is. Listen, God's justice is true. It cannot be denied. In the conclusion of this 42nd chapter, it lets us know if we just hold on, if we can just hold on to God's unchanging hand in the midst of our storm, heaven's help is on the way. Job never cursed God. He never denied God. But Job made some unwarranted accusations against God. He said some things that he should not have said. He cursed the day that he was born. He said he was or he felt like he would have been better off dead. Listen, beloved of God, these comments as Christians, we don't never need to make, regardless to what we're going through, regardless to what's going on in our lives. Our negative comments, our big talk, our running off at the mouth don't impress God, and it is surely not a reflection of who God is. Our God is just. Our God is faithful. Our God is pure. Our God is holy. Our God is our Savior, the giver of our life, the sustainer of our life. And if we can't say anything good, if we can't say anything wonderful, if we can't say anything great about Jesus, then we don't need to say nothing at all. Because the word of God says we will give in account of every idle word spoken against God. God is our creator and he is worthy of all the praise. Only, nothing negative, but always exalting him, always giving him glory and honor. So God asked Job, who is this? that question my wisdom with such ignorance. If you don't understand something, beloved of God, say you don't understand. If you don't know something, say you don't know. But never accuse God. Never belittle his name. Never challenge his wisdom. Never challenge his righteousness. Never challenge his faithfulness. Never challenge his supremacy. Never challenge, because if you do, God will call you out. Where were you, Job, when I took nothing and made something? Where were you, Job, when I created the heavens and the earth? Where were you when I sent my son to die on the cross 
for your sins and my sins. But yet, while he was dying on the cross, he cried out to the Father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Job confessed, and he told the Lord, it was I. I was the one talking about things I knew nothing about. I was the one talking about things too wonderful and great for me to understand. But you see, Lord, not trying to make excuses, but before this experience, before trouble attacked me, I had only heard about you. And what I heard, I trusted. What I was taught about you, Father, I believed with my whole heart. What I learned about you, Lord, I respected and I honored. But now, God, in going through my trouble, but now, God, I've seen you with my own eyes. In the midst of my trouble, I see your mercy. I see your compassion. I see your power. I see your greatness. I see your sovereignty. I know you for myself. I personally know you for myself. I had heard about you, Lord, but now I can truly say I know you for myself. Beloved, until you get to know God for yourself, until you accept God as your Lord and your Savior, everything else is here so. Here say, Job said, Lord, I take back everything I said. I take back everything I said. I repent, Lord God, of the comments that I made. I repent, Lord God, of the things that I said. My brothers and my sisters, you may ask, what difference does it make? Job was going through hard times. You are going through hard times. You are facing troubles. You are facing difficulties. What difference does it make if I say something that I ain't got no business saying? Well, beloved of God, as we see in the word, unrepentance, saying stuff you ain't got no business saying, can hinder your blessings, no matter how small or great. And I'm here to let you know, I refuse, I refuse to lose my blessings because of my pride. I refuse, I refuse to lose any of my blessings because of what I'm going through. I confess, Lord, I confess my faults. I confess my big talks. I confess saying things that I knew nothing about. Please forgive me of my sins. Not only did Job have to repent, but Job's friends who had made some accusations against God and Job had to repent too. And the Lord told them, unless they repented, unless they go to Job, unless they offer up a burnt sacrifice unto him, that God was going to destroy them. And the Bible says that when they went to Job, that Job prayed for his friends. And when Job prayed for his friends, right here we're going to see how powerful prayer is. And when you talk about, well, I ain't going to pray for my enemies. I ain't going to pray for those who despitefully use me. I submit to you, you need to pray. Because after Job prayed for his friends, the word of God said that God restored back to Job everything that he lost. Everything that he lost, God restored it back to him. He restored his family back. He restored his friends back. The Bible says they came to his house and they began to comfort Job. They began to fellowship with Job. But when they came back, they didn't come back empty-handed. They came with money in their hand. They came with gold in their hand. Look at God, the greatness of God, the power of God. God will take your enemy and make them your footstool. But God don't have steps, and God don't cut corners. What was taken from Job, what was taken from him, was restored back to him double. Job's latter days was greater than his former days. 
I need to tell somebody, beloved of God, no matter what you go through, no matter what you're going through, stand your ground. You know who keeps you. You know who saves you. You know who watches over you. You know who protects you. You know who heals you. Stand your ground. You know who blesses you. You know who loves you unconditionally. You know who comforts you in the midnight hour. Stand your ground. Stand on the solid rock of the foundation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Stand your ground, beloved of God. For in a few days, in a few days, your former days will become your latter days. Don't get weary. Don't faint. Don't fret. Stand your ground. For in a few days, your former days will become your latter days. Job never had to experience the affliction, the suffering, the attacks of Satan again. He could rest in the Lord. He could rest in God while he was yet here on earth. And God allowed Job in his latter days to enjoy them. He went old and crippled. He didn't walk with a cane, but he stood strong. He stood with faith. He stood and he had a long, good, full life. And the word of God said that Job saw four generations of his children. Stand your ground. Do we serve a just God? Even in these days and times, yes, our God is just. I'm a witness because my mother, who is 90 years old, is living in her latter days. She walked better than I walked. She stayed in the house by herself. She cooked her own food. Praise God. God will renew your strength. Even in your latter days, I say unto you, beloved of God, stand your ground. No matter what you go through, you hold on to God. No matter the attacks, no matter, no matter what's going on around us, stand your ground. Stand on the solid rock of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He will never leave you or forsake you. May we pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father God, for how you show up and show out. Lord God, we ask in the name of Jesus, those who are going through, those who are being attacked by the hand of the enemy, we thank you, Father, and you will comfort and strengthen them and let them know you are there, you are there to see them through. We thank you, Father God, for giving them the stamina to press on, to run on in the name of Jesus, to trust your word, to hand, stand on your word, to believe the promises of your word, to stand their ground for what they know is real and for what they know is true. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. God bless you, beloved of God. And may heaven smile upon you as you go in God. Always be mindful, whatever you go through, you stand in Jesus Christ. He will not let you down, and he surely will not disappoint you. God bless you.